Hi, I'm Chell Lussy, and I'm with the HVAC department, and today we're going to have an introduction to electricity, specifically magnetism. Now, let's get into magnetism a little bit. I mentioned that this is the introduction to electricity, and it deals with magnetism. Because electrons are magnets, you cannot have electricity without magnetism. Now, we can have magnetism without electricity, but you cannot have electricity without magnetism. Let's talk about magnetism itself. You've probably all played with magnets. And again, we come to the opposites attract and likes repel theory with magnets. If we take a permanent magnet with a north and a south polarity and another magnet with a north and a south polarity, those two magnets would attract to each other. The north being attracted to the south, the south attracted to the north. And just like our electrical charges, if we took our magnet with its north and south polarity and took this magnet and switched it end for end and tried to do south-north, the south would not go together. They would repel away from each other. Basics of magnetism. Okay, let's talk about the magnetizing of a piece of material. There are permanent magnets that we can dig out of the ground, but mostly what you and I are going to deal with is materials that will become magnetized and are not permanent magnets. Let's look at one of these. Here's a piece of material that has the ability to magnetize, but is not yet magnetic. Here's what's happening. These little squares inside this chunk of metal represent the atoms. And the atoms, as I mentioned, have indeed north and south polarities to them. Remember that they spin on an axis, as does our Earth. And, all, and in the same way that our Earth has magnetic field, so do the uh, electrons. So these little atoms then have magnetism and their north and south polarity. Well, in an unmagnetized piece of iron or piece of metal, those magnets are not aligned in any particular fashion. They're scattered all over the place, north here, south here, who knows. However, when we force a piece of metal to magnetize, the opposite is true. What we end up with is the south and north polarities lining up with each other, the opposites attracting to each other. We've put those atoms in an alignment. This is what gives them magnetism. This is where we create what we call the north and south polarities. You'll notice that on the end is the north pole and on this end is the south pole. What's happening is that through the middle of the magnetic material, the north has a south to connect to, the north has a south, the south has a north, they all have something to connect to. But on the ends, this north does not have a south associated with it yet. And so it's out, let's say this way, it's out looking for a south. In here, these souths in the middle all have a north to connect to. But on the end, what we call the pole, these souths are not connected to a north yet. And they're looking for their north. So they're out looking for north, the north is out looking for south. We call these ends the poles. This is where the magnetic field is the strongest because it has yet to connect with something. It's the, the energy is still strong. It has not been used in the connection to another pole. Now, when we talk about magnetic forces, Magnetic forces come to us in what we refer to as flux lines or lines of magnetic flux. Lines of magnetic flux always flow north pole to south pole. They flow north to south always, without fail. I've got another overhead to show you that'll help describe that. and that would be this picture. Here is simply a permanent bar magnet with a north and a south polarity. 
you can see by the arrows I've drawn in that those flux lines are in fact flowing from the North Pole to the South Pole and will have flow as big as the magnet has strength to create those flux lines. Certainly based on its magnet, magnetic strength, as you get farther and farther and farther from the magnet, the lines of flux become weaker and weaker and weaker until they don't exist. As an example of magnetic repulsion and attraction, let's take a look at this. Here we have two permanent magnets with a, now a north being brought close to a south. And the north polarity is flowing to the south. They're attracting to one another. We have flow from north to south. But when we bring two like poles, as in this case, two norths, the north and the north will not connect together. You've played with magnets, no doubt. You've tried to push them together, and they just repel away from each other. If they're weak enough magnets, your muscles can, are strong enough and you can probably force them together. But if the magnets have enough power, you'll never get them together, they'll repel away. And this simply shows you what the flux lines are doing. The actual magnetic force, the lines of magnetic flux, are simply repelling away from each other. They don't like each other, they're not gonna touch each other. Now, when we deal with a permanent magnet, such as the magnets you and I will use in our lab, we have what's called a horseshoe magnet. It's a permanent magnet, but it's in the shape of a horseshoe. Now, if left alone on the table, that magnetic strength from that permanent magnet will in fact dissipate. The energy will wear out, so to speak. And what's happening is that the north is out trying to find its south, and the south is out trying to find its north, and the flux lines are scattered, and they just dissipate out into the air, and eventually the magnet will lose its, its strength. To help maintain that strength, we put what's called a keeper on that bar magnet. We take a piece of material that is easily magnetized, we simply attach it to the magnet, it sucks right up against it, and the north then will induce, induce magnetic field into the keeper. Now the north polarity, the north polarity will induce south polarity. To induce, to create, to cause, okay, some, some, some other like terms. To induce a north polarity will always induce south. A south polarity will always induce north. So it's going to induce its opposite. That makes sense in that we can't have two norths together. You can't have two souths together. So if you're going to get these two things to connect, wouldn't they have to be opposites? Wouldn't the north have to induce a south so that they could connect? or a south induce a north so that they could connect, makes kind of some common sense. So that's what's going on here. We put a what's called a keeper on the end of the magnet to keep its strength. The north plate of the magnet induces south into the iron bar. The south plate of the magnet induces north. We now have attraction. The, the bar attaches to the magnet. We have created, basically we've created, a closed circuit for the magnetism. The magnetism now is going to be able to travel around in circle through the keeper and hold on to that strength. Let's talk about terminology of magnets. I have three, three terms for you for magnetism. Sometimes that's three, sometimes that's three. Depends on my mood. Okay, the first one is permeability. Permeability, to permeate. How easily will a material take on magnetism? This is permeability. Let's write it that way. How easy will a material become a magnet?
how easy it will become a magnet? Permeability. If it is very permeable, it will become magnetized very easily. A very good example of this is soft iron. Soft iron is said to be very permeable. It becomes a magnet very, very easily, very energy involved in, very little energy involved in doing that. As a matter of fact, the keeper that we showed you on this slide is made of soft iron, the material that we use for keepers. What do you want to bet rubber is not very permeable? You ever tried to magnetize rubber? It doesn't work very well. It's not very permeable. Glass doesn't magnetize, not very permeable. The second term is retentivity. Retentivity, to retain, to stay magnetized. How well will a material remain, remain or stay a magnet? Well, a permanent magnet has got a lot of retentivity. It's a permanent magnet. It's always a magnet. Soft iron, on the other hand, that we're using for that keeper, very permeable, very little or no retentivity. The moment you remove the soft iron from the magnetic flux, it goes back to being a non-magnetic piece of material. It does not retain its magnetism. So retentivity, how well will a material remain or stay a magnet? The third term is reluctance. I am, yes, reluctance. Reluctance is the resistance to becoming magnetized. If something does not magnetize, it is said to have a lot of reluctance. I used two examples earlier. Rubber, you can't magnetize rubber. It has high reluctance. It has no permeability. It certainly doesn't have any retentivity. Glass is the same way. Very, a lot of reluctance. No permeability, certainly no retentivity. Just some examples. Let's talk about a compass. A compass that you would find, that you would use maybe to find your way through the woods or out of the woods, has a tip and a tail and is usually set on a spinner, a way to be able to rotate, a little spinner. The pointy end, sometimes they'll paint the end as well to distinguish it from the tail. The tip is always a north magnet. Therefore, the tail is a south magnet. The tip is north magnetic, the south is, uh, the tail is south magnetic. That plays a part in what we're doing here only in this regard. We're going to be able to use a magnet to determine what electrons are doing. Remember that electrons themselves, because they spin on an axis, are little magnets. They have a south polarity and a north polarity. Well, with the fact that opposites attract and likes repel, we can use a compass to determine what electrons are doing. Remember that uh, electricity is nothing more really than the movement of these electrons. Electricity is the movement of these little magnets. So if we have a piece of wire, and we're moving electrons down that wire, I could take a magnet, I'm sorry, I could take a compass, and I could determine what that, mag that electricity, that magnetism, those electrons are doing based on the way my compass behaves. We have an experiment that we'll show you that will do that for us. 